Make sure you've watched the videos on the basics of translation and the sequence of the steps that actually happen. Um, it's important not to get bogged down with all the small details, but think big picture. What is the purpose of everything? And this is the diagram that kind of explains that. Remember, our DNA contains all the genes. When we want our genes to do something specific, that specific gene will be transcribed and we'll make a copy of it in the form of RNA. And then RNA will be the message with the instructions that gets delivered outside of the nucleus to a factory, a protein factory, to actually convert that message into something useful, a protein, which could be an enzyme, an antibody, a hormone, um, or any other type of protein. And a protein is just a sequence of, of, of amino acids. So basically, basically this code spells out which amino acids we need to bring together to put in the right order in order to create a protein that has a specific function. A more complex diagram is being shown over here, where DNA is the red molecule, double-stranded. RNA, here a message is being constructed using one side of the DNA template. That message is going to be sent out into the cytoplasm. Here's a ribosome, this green thing. And then we have some other little players here. These are actually tRNA molecules that are going to bring the specific amino acid based on the codon on the mRNA, and then these amino acids will join with other amino acids that have previously be, been brought over, and that'll be your long polypeptide chain. And that polypeptide chain will fold into a protein and have a specific function. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look specifically at the structure of the ribosome and the different parts and how it all fits together, and then specifically about the tRNA molecules. So this is what's happening down here. So let's just uncover a few of these things. Okay, this whole thing we're looking at is the ribosome and the ribosome is made up of a small subunit and a large subunit. This arrow should actually be pointing at this larger piece up here. Okay, so think of it as two halves. There's a binding site for the mRNA because the mRNA has got to fit through like a typewriter. And then you have a binding site for, you have three binding sites actually for these tRNA molecules. And tRNA molecules, you've learned before, are very important because they are the ones that are bringing the amino acids over. And these binding sites have three names. You can call them E, P, and A. But that's not so important for now. You can see that in the previous uh, video. Uh, a little side note here. There are actually three types of RNA you need to know about. mRNA, you've got you've learned about before. tRNA are these little transfer molecules that are going to bring the amino acids over. And then there's one third type of RNA called rRNA, but it's the least significant. And all you have to know if somebody asks you is, uh, where can I find rRNA? And then you would say, rRNA is actually just structural uh, structural nucleic acid that makes up part of the ribosome. So we don't even have to draw that in. We don't have to uh, ever mention that again. But that's the third type of rRNA. And it's easy to remember because R stands for ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA. So these are all the pieces here. And if you just a, a quick uh, quick recap. So if as this is moving along, okay, and uh, uh, let's just say this thing, the ribosome is moving to the right. This is the three prime end for all of you geeks out there. This is the five prime end. The ribosome is moving to the right here. And as it moves, there's letters here. And I've greatly oversimplified this, but this is, there should be codons here, three letters. You know, there's A's, U's, C's, and G's along here. But a codon is right here, three letters. And then what will happen is a tRNA molecule with the matching anticodon, with the matching anticodon, not the same three letters, but the complementary letters to these three down here, would come over here. But this is useless, it can't come over here, this is empty. At one side of it, it has to actually come with a amino acid attached. So this thing is gonna come over here. The anticodon at the bottom is gonna end up matching the codon here. Uh, another one is going to come do the same thing. Let's do this really quickly. So another one comes along. So this one moves over here. This one should actually have a different amino acid, but you get the point, and let's do that again. So one more is gonna fly in. These are gonna move down the spots one at a time. And then when this happens, these guys are actually going to release their uh, amino acids. I need a quick way, shift command G. Okay, shift command G is going to release the amino acid. Whoops, from this one. Ah, that's horrible. Shift command G, got it, all right. 
So these amino acids will actually start building a chain and connecting together and they'll move down and exit one at a time and then you'll end up with uh, your growing chain of, of amino acids. Whoops, that was the wrong one. Anyways, I think you get the idea. There are greater computer animators that are out there who've done an amazing job with this, but hopefully you can see that. Go back if you didn't understand. But in the end, you'll get a big sequence of a whole bunch of these amino acids. Remember, every codon, every three letters codes for one amino acid. That's an especially happy amino acid. What else do we have here? Oh, between these amino acids, this is uh, back, back to condensation reactions, but between these amino acids, each amino acid actually looks like this half right here, NCC. And when they bond together, there's a peptide bond that's formed. So there's peptide bond, peptide bond, peptide bond, peptide bond, peptide bond between each one of these things. That makes it all nice, fine, and dense. So that's the overall structure of what a ribosome actually does. Um, I'm not going to go into that, but you can read that if you're interested. And this I actually mentioned in previous videos, so I'm not going to go into it. But if you want to take a look at that, just a quick reminder of uh, ribosomes can that can be bound or free. So that is the overall uh, structured understanding of ribosomes. In the next video, I'm going to talk specifically about these guys, these tRNAs, because you might be asking, well, what happens? What happens after this guy has dropped off its amino acid and it leaves? It doesn't have an amino acid anymore. That's really sad. And then so it's just kind of floating around with no purpose. It has to be called in. It got called in because of the codon. So it's just going to be floating around here with nothing to do. But you might ask, well, do we just destroy it? No, actually, we get to recharge it. But if you remember, this one was an orange amino acid. Uh, this specific one will not be, I can't recharge it with this one because this one does not, this amino acid does not match with this anticodon. So it's not going to make sense. This one has to be specifically recharged with the correct amino acid. More on that in the next video.